Hi, James here. Uh, I just wanted to talk about a new book that I read that I really enjoyed. Uh, it's called Sweet by Jonathan Augier. So I broke my rule where I only read books that are recommended me by someone because um, I did that. I created the rule for good reason when I tried to read Sharp Objects by Jillian Flynn and I was like, ah, I'm going to be very depressed if I read this. So, uh, I but I broke it and I'm really happy that I did. This is a really, really good book. Really enjoyed it. The narrator was awesome. I forgot her name, but it's a woman who, uh, one of the things I look for in a narrator is how they do the voices of the opposite sex. Some people try too hard. Some people just are incapable of doing another voice, but they don't uh, change, or a, a voice of the opposite gender. Kind of like the narrator of Mysterious Bandit Society, it seems but they change their tone and the way they talk and express and, and emphasis on words and, and sentences so much that you can always tell who's talking. That's how Mysterious Benedict Society was, which was awesome. So she does change her voice. She doesn't try too hard. I could always tell who's talking. Uh, the vo I didn't think, oh, she's changing to a man's voice now because she didn't try too hard. It was great. Uh, she acts in the way she talks. She acts out the dialogue. So if someone's crying, they, she sounds distressed. She doesn't spend, you know, 10 seconds making weeping noises. Uh, but she sounds distressed. She's acting out the person's intention in the way she talks like an actor should, which was really good. And I just really enjoyed her. She does different accents based on people's educational level. It was great. The writing, the writing was stellar. Uh, it was excellent. Hey, Lensfly, I'm JJ Abrams. Uh... <clears throat> The pacing was really good, had good ups and downs, wasn't constantly up, weren't too, wasn't too long down. Whenever there was tension, there was real tension, there was always something at stake. It's, even if you didn't think the main character was gonna say die, you knew based on things that happened, the story and the tone and the environment, uh, the setting that it takes place in, pre-child labor laws in London, or at least pre, the 1875 or 18, I think it was the set 1875 uh, law. Uh, you know that people could get, the main character could get injured, that someone else could die, that something that they hold very dearly could be taken away from them, and that was really good. So there's a lot of really good tension in the, in those moments, and uh, yeah, kept me really engaged. Uh, the relationships and the characters made sense. I sympathized with characters. I understood. I could empathize even with the villainous characters. Characters that seemed well thought out and realistic. I could imagine meeting someone like that and I really enjoyed that. Uh, the tone, really good. I lie, it was a bit dark, which I enjoyed. And for a children's book, I think Auxier did it well. He didn't make it depressing, um, but he did show that, you know, the world is, uh, there's sadness in the world and that there's injustice, there's tragedy, but there's good amid that. It made me think of the, what do you call, uh, Doctor Who quote, good things don't necessarily soften the bad things, but bad things don't spoil the good things or make them unimportant. So that was... I think a kind of a common theme in it. Uh, thematically, I, I loved it. I love the themes of wonderment and beauty in the ordinary, of the fact that there's magic, but magic comes from ordinary things. That was really that was really cool. The way that the magic works with the sweep. Uh, yeah, there was one thing that I I wasn't super sure about. Uh, there's a scene where this Jew, the main character, and a Jewish woman are talking. And when the Jewish woman finds out that golems exist, is she, she sort of, it seems she's abandoned her faith. She's kind of separated, it seems, physically and emotionally from her family. And now she's kind of like, oh, golems exist. I mean, I grew up thinking that, you know, this is part of my childhood, my, what I was raised in, which I've moved away from. So what does this mean for me? And the main character says, well, do you think that, does this make you believe in God again? And she says something to the effect of, it makes me think that the world is full of wonder and wonderful things, and maybe that's the same thing. 
So I have mixed feelings about this. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm ambivalent, but also undecided about what I think about it because I'm not quite sure what he means. Ooh, flowers. Those are gonna be gone soon. So it made me think, first I was like, okay, wait, are you saying that? So to me, beauty and wonder is an indication of something more than just a world based on chance. So therefore, a world that's not just humanist, a world that's not just secular, but a world where there's there's an eternal aspect to reality. And therefore, a divine aspect to it. So a god, a designer to the things that are beautiful, an artist to that wonder. And so to me, it's an indication of the thing. So like saying the thing and the indication of it aren't the same thing. Um, trying to think of an analogy like light versus sight. Right? Uh, you can't, they're not the same thing. One is an indication of the other or a physical world in sight maybe or the five senses in the physical world. Uh, if you have the five senses and they are real, then, Butterfly. then therefore there is a physical world. Otherwise, you wouldn't even know about the five senses, right? Maybe you could imagine you could have them without there being a physical world, uh, but it wouldn't really make sense and you wouldn't know you had them, right? So to me, that was kind of a cheap way of just kind of getting around the question. Again, I'm Christian. I'm not saying how dare a book have, how dare uh, maybe a non-Christian author put his own philosophy into the book. Of course he's going to do that. Everyone's going to. Uh, put their own philosophy into what they're writing and uh, I think it and so I'm not that's not my problem it's more just like I feel like a child would say and children are generally good at seeing through things that just don't initially don't don't make real sense like wait are they the same thing because I think that they're not now maybe he was trying to say hey like if there's a god then this whole world is designed and it's a piece of art not just chance and if you have wonder and you see beauty, then you're seeing that other side of that coin, right? So if that's what he meant by the other side of the coin, I mean, kind of the sight and the sight and the color, the touch and the physical, right? There are two sides of a coin that is to say, we live in a reality where there is physical things and they can be touched or seen or smelled. So maybe he's saying that, hey, maybe there is a God or, you know, hey, there is a God, and that's why you can wonder, and that's why there's beauty. So maybe he was trying to say that. Let me know what you think. Uh, again, I'm just, I'm not trying to say, I, I don't like nuance in a children's book. I don't think there should be a lot of nuance, or any maybe, because children are very, children are, are trying to learn, and they're very impressionable adults are too but it's just it's different so i don't think there should be a hey maybe there is a god maybe there isn't like you wouldn't have a book where the main character murders someone and it's never you could have a children's book where the main character murders someone i think but in a children's book it wouldn't be ambiguous as to whether or not that was the right thing that were the right thing so to me that's kind of what i'm looking for in a children's book i'm kind of in with this one with sweep i'm trying to evaluate okay what did he mean? What was he trying to communicate? And I'm not sure. Uh, but either way, uh, even even if that ends up being something I decide, hey, I don't think that this was communicated well, or I just disagree with it, or I think that was stupid. Uh, I think the book was fantastic. I really enjoyed it. I'll probably read it again one day. I'll probably read some more of Jonathan Ogsie's work. I might look up this narrator too and see if she's done anything else that I'm interested in reading. Maybe another Jonathan Ogsie book. And yeah, I recommend it. Um, just really good and creative plot line. Um, yeah, it's kind of, I guess, 19th century urban fantasy. Uh, I haven't read urban fantasy before. I'm reading Neverwhere right now by Neil Gaiman, and I think that's urban fantasy. So I am now, but hadn't read that before. So just very creative, really interesting, engaging, short book, eight hours long to listen to. And I recommend it if you've read it or if you have any thoughts on... Yeah, if you have any thoughts on it, please comment below. Hit subscribe. Love to hear from you. Uh, yeah, cheers.